So what we're going to do today is we're going to design an asynchronous counter that counts from 2 through 9 and resets on 10. Okay. Since it's asynchronous, we want our JK flip-flops to be able to toggle. So what I did is I tied my J and my Ks to high. That's what the arrow pointing up means. It means they're tied to 5 volts, which that puts a 1 and a 1. If we remember our tooth cable, when J and K are one, both 1s, we get into the toggle mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this counter to start at 2 and reset when it gets to 10. And what we're going to do that is we're going to use a NAND gate and an AND gate to do that, okay? So our AND gate is what's gonna set or reset in conjunction with this. So what we need to figure out is if this is our least significant bit and this is my most significant bit, what do I need to see to represent two? Because that's gonna tell me where I gotta put my gate to reset everything back to normal, back to where I want. So to get two, I'm gonna need a zero, a one, a zero, and a zero. So the only one I want to be one initially is this one. So my output off my AND gate is going to come down to this flip flop. So when I have, when I set on one, so anytime I have a zero coming out of my AND gate, it's going to go in here as a one and it's going to set this. Okay? Well, if I want this one set, when I have a zero coming out, I want these to be clear. So my AND gate is also going to come down to the clear on all of these. So now when I get a zero out of here, it's going to go here, change to a one. It's going to set this one and make this a one. It's going to put a zero in here, change it to a one, which is going to clear it. And it's going to put a zero on all these. Okay. And the way this NAND gate is going to tie in is my output of my NAND gate is actually going to wind up being my second input on my AND gate. Now, where are we going to get the inputs? We'll get to that in a second. Okay. So I said it's asynchronous, which means they're not all going to clock at the same time. As you can see, I got my clock going into my first one. How am I going to clock my other ones? is I'm going to use the output of my previous gate or my previous flip-flop to clock my next flip-flop. So I'm going to kind of daisy chain all them together like that. So the output of my flip-flop, my previous flip-flop, is going to clock my next flip-flop. These are positive edge trigger, which means they trigger from, from zero to one but the inverter makes it a negative edge trigger, so it's going to trigger when I go from 1 to 0. So when this flip-flop goes from a 1 to a 0, it's going to clock this flip-flop. When this flip-flop goes from a 1 to a 0, it's going to clock this flip-flop. And when this one goes from a 1 to a 0, it'll clock that one. Now, if you notice, this is my least significant bit. This is my most significant bit. So when I actually tie these to my lights, to get my output, which I'm going to do next, it's going to be easier if I take this flip-flop and I draw it down here and I put my light here. And then I do my next flip-flop and I'm going to come off my output and I put that light here. Come off my next output. Put that light here. So now you can see I'm going to wind up with my most significant bit when I'm reading across like I normally would. It'll make more sense when I do it. And I know my lines aren't straight, but that's okay. I'll give you an idea. So now I got my MSB here and my LSB over here. So when I initially turn it on, the only light that's going to light up would be my green one. 
and I'd have 0, 0, 1, 0, which is 2. Okay. So now, the question is, how do I get this thing to reset? Because what's going to happen when I initially turn it on is I got a 0 and a 0 here, which puts a 0 out. But as soon as that happens, because I'm tied to power, this is going to change to a 1. Well, how am I going to get a 0 here? Okay, I got to get all my NAND gate tied back in somehow, because if I have a 1 and a 1 here, I'm going to put a 1 out, which is going to keep this one set. So I'm going to have, I need to get a 0 here. That will give me the 0 out. So how am I going to get a 0 here? Well, the only way I get a zero out on a NAND gate is if both my inputs are one. So I have to figure out when are both my inputs going to be one. Well, I only want it to count two to nine. I don't want it to count ten. So how do I put ten in binary? Well, ten is going to be zero, one, zero, one, because this is my most significant bit. So it's one, zero, one, zero. So when these two are one, I want it to reset. So I'm going to take and I'm going to tie this output to here and I'm going to tie this output to here. So now when these turn one, I got two ones going in, it gives me a zero out, comes back, this gives me a zero out, and now I got a one going in, it's going to set this. I'm going to have zeros going in here, which is going to change to a one with my inverter, it's going to clear these, and I'm going to be back to two. Now, the question is, does it work? So we're going to walk through it and see. So the first number I have, and I'm going to draw it over here, is I'm going to have 0, 1, 0, 0. That's 2. 0, 1, 0, 0, because I'm going this way. So when it comes in, when my clock comes in, it's going to clock this one. And it's going to change it to a 1. Well, this one went from a 0 to a 1. So it's not going to clock this, because I told you it's only going to clock on the trailing edge, which means it's going from a 1 to a 0. So this one's going to stay the same. Well, this one went from a 1 to a 1, so that one's going to stay the same. This one went from a 0 to a 0, that one's going to stay the same. So now I got 0, 0, 1, 1, which is 3. Comes in, it's going to clock it again. This one's going to go to a 0. Well, this one went from a 1 to a 0, so it's going to clock this flip-flop, which is going to make it toggle. This one went from a 1 to a 0, it's going to clock this flip-flop, make it toggle. This one went from a 0 to a 1, so this one's going to stay the same. Now I got 4. Again, we'll come in, I'm going to clock it, this one's going to go to a 1. I went from a 0 to a 1, so this one's going to stay the same. 0 to a 0, this one's going to stay the same. A 1 to a 1, this one's going to stay the same. So now I got 5. I'm going to clock again. 1 to a 0. So this one went 1 to a 0, this one's going to clock. Goes to a 1. 0 to a 1, this one stays the same. 1 to a 1, this one's going to stay the same. So now I got 6. I'm going to clock again. This one is going to change to a 1. Well, this one went from a 0 to a 1, so that one's going to stay the same. It went from a 1 to a, or, yeah, 1, to a one, so this one's going to stay the same. This one went from a 1 to a 1, that one's going to stay the same. So now I got 0, 1, 1, I got 7. So I'm going to clock it again. That one goes to a 0. This one went 1 to 0, this one's going to clock. 1 to 0, this one's going to clock. 1 to a 0, that one's going to clock. So now I got an 8. I'm going to clock again. 1. And 0 to 1, this one's going to stay the same. 0 to 0, this one's going to stay the same. 0 to 0, this one's going to stay the same. I'm at 9. So now I'm going to come in, it's going to clock again. This one goes to a 0. 1 to a 0, this one's going to go to a 1. 0 to 1, this one will stay the same. 0 to 0, this one. Well, now I'm at 10, so I got 1 and 1 here. Bam! Gave me a 0 out, it came back. So I'm never going to see this, because as soon as that comes in, it's going to go back and it's going to clear that one, set this one, clear that one, and clear that one, and I'm back to two. So that's how you're going to wire up your asynchronous counter. Have fun. Goodbye.